Hi, everyone. Welcome to the class. We're just waiting on a few more people to join before I introduce our instructor and we get um, the class started. So I'll just give it just a minute or two more. Um, while we're waiting, if everyone wants to um, just say where they're from in the chat bar, we can kind of get an idea of where everyone's joining from. Awesome. It looks yeah. like we already have people from everywhere. <laughs> That's fabulous. Cool. Well, it looks like the majority of the people are in the class. There might be a few more that join in the next couple minutes or so, but I'll go ahead and introduce our instructor so she can get the class started. So today we're really excited to have um, one of Tombo's brand ambassadors, Beth Watson from Creatively Beth, teaching you how to create some Halloween doodles. And she'll be showing you um, all different ways you can incorporate these into your life from putting them in your planner, adding them to gift bags, uh, bookmarks. There's so many things you can do with these doodles. Um, if you have any questions during the class, feel free to drop them in the chat bar and I'll do my best to answer everyone's questions. And maybe we might have some time for Beth to answer some at the end. And without further ado, Beth, I'm gonna hand it off for you. I'm going to hand it off to you to get us started. Okay, hey there everybody. My name is Beth Watson and I am an elite brand ambassador for Tombow. I have worked with Tombow products for 10 or 12 years now. Um, love everything that I ever put my hands on that has the Tombow logo on it. Um, so they really do great high quality products um, that really meet everybody's needs for any type of art, whether you're a fine artist or you're just, you know, kind of messing around and doodling. Um, I also do um, the live shots on um, HSN for Tombow. So I have uh, done some, some selling on the Home Shopping Network. And I was on the um, design team for Tombow for four years. So I'm really very familiar with the Tombow brand. I've also taught other classes at um, trade shows and pinners conferences uh, with, for Tombow. So I'm very excited for this opportunity to teach folks from all over the country. Um, I'm actually based in Fort Myers, Florida. So I'm two hours south of Tampa and it's supposed to be 88 degrees here today. <laughs> so we're still, we don't really get fall, we're still in summer. Um, but what I'll do is we will go ahead and um, we can switch to my overhead camera. We'll go ahead and get started. There we go. If everybody can see, it's this camera right here with the yellow. So some of the supplies that we're gonna be using today is um, the Strathmore, I like the Strathmore Mixed Media Pad. This is um, the 300 series, which I believe is one of their uh, least expensive um, brands. Um, the, the Mixed Media has a nice fine tooth and a smooth paper, so we don't have um, any skipping. We're also gonna be using our 10 pack dual brush pens. We're using the Bright Set today, which is my favorite. It's got a really nice mix of rainbow colors. It's available at Michael's. And we're also going to be using, probably see it better that way. See the mono drawing pens. Today we're gonna to be using the 01, the 03 and the 05. Um, the numbers on the pen relates to the width of the nib. So the 01 is gonna be a skinny, very fine detailed pen. The 03 is gonna be your medium and the 05 is gonna be the thickest. These are also available at Michael's and these are nice because they're um, a semi-permanent ink. So when used in combination with the dual brush pens, which are water-based, they don't smear and smudge um, quite as much as if you were using dual brush pen with dual brush pen. Um, and then if you guys want also to use a pencil, if you want to outline your doodles in pencil first, that's perfectly fine. We've got our um, mono jade um, drawing pencils. And then my favorite eraser is the, the mono plastic eraser. And it also, the drawing pencils and the mono eraser are in a, um, 
a pack from Michael's. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Do you guys wanna see some of the finished products or do you wanna see, do you wanna just get right to doodling? Let me know in the comments. Um, it looks like already a few people are wanting to see what it's gonna look like at the end. Okay, all right. I can show you some of the samples that I've created. So here are a couple of bookmarks. So we're gonna be doodling a pumpkin. We're gonna be doodling a candy corn. And we're gonna be doodling a witch hat. So I took those three and I created bookmarks with them, which is a fun alternative um, to giving out candy um, on Halloween. If you've got you know, kids that do the teal pumpkin uh, and they have allergies, then that's a fun thing for the kids to do for Halloween. I also did a spread in my journal. Again, using the mono drawing pens. Let me see if I can get, sorry. So I did a fun October calendar spread and I used the candy corns in the title. And then I also did a mood tracker and I used the pumpkins in the mood tracker as well as the bright set to color in the pumpkins. So my pink pumpkins mean that I had a pretty good October so far. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure the one for today is gonna be pink too. So we did a, a fun journal um, and then this was, super fun. Everybody does the, the you've been booed or you've been boozed. <laughs> um, so I took the candy corns and I made them larger. You can see with my hand as a size. And I just wrote trick or treat on them and attached them to a gift bag. And I'm going to fill um, a bunch of these with um, some candy and some treats and some different things. And I'm going to leave them for my neighbors. And then let's see, the other fun thing that I did was I went ahead and created a coloring page. So I used the hat as the dot in the I from the trick. And then I used the candy corn in the A on the treat. And then I added some of the pumpkins at the bottom for a fun coloring page. And then the last thing I made, which I don't know if you can, can you turn my camera back on me, Felicia? There we go. So I also did a fun garland. So I blew them up really big and I paper clipped them onto a ribbon to make a fun Halloween garland. So there really is a lot of different things that you can do with a doodle. And we'll go ahead and get started. So I also have a blog. Um, I blog over at creativelybeth.com. And what I will have for you after the class is I have actual drawing handouts that are downloadable free printables on my blog. And it will step through how to do the doodles. So there's the pumpkin. And I'm going to show you here live, but this is just backup that we have for today's class. Okay, so I'm gonna have, and what I'm gonna use today so that you guys can see a little bit better is I'm gonna actually be using um, my, my uh, N15 black dual brush pen, but that's just so that you guys outlines a little bit better. Um, all the projects that I created here, I have used um, my mono drawing pen. And I really do use those quite a bit. So, okay, so if we are ready to get started, I think we'll go ahead and start with the candy corn. 
because I think he's the easiest. So I can just put that right there. And then I can show you how we're gonna go ahead and draw a candy corn. And again, you guys can start out with pencil if you want. You don't have to go straight to pen. I'm gonna go straight to pen because doodles are just meant to be fun. They're not accurate drawings. They're just fun representations. So we're gonna draw a triangle that has rounded corners, basically, is what we're gonna start out with, okay? Can everybody see that good? Okay, so that's our first step, step number one. And then step number two, we're gonna create our lines. So I'm gonna go about a third of the way down and create a line. And then I'm gonna go another third of the way down, create another line. So those, that's, that's our basic candy corn shape. And then what I'm also gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna show you how to color these in. I've got my um, 933 and my 055 from the bright set, which is the orange and the yellow. And I always wanna think that it's orange, yellow, white, but it's not. It's yellow, orange, white on a candy corn. <laughs> so what we can do is go ahead and use the brush tip of our pen and color that in. And the nice thing about the dual brush pens is they are water-based. So the uh, more you go over a color, the deeper it will become. So if you're not pleased with how yellow it is and you want it to be a little bit more yellow, just go ahead and create additional layers of color over top of the section. And I'm coloring that in. Can everybody see that? Good. Yeah. And I'm kind of watching my edges because I don't want it to, to smear. The other thing um, that's nice about the dual brush pens is they are um, they are self-cleaning. So if I was to um, make a mistake and kind of go in there and pick up <clears throat> the black onto the yellow, I can just go over here and I can swipe my pen onto the paper and I can clean that. So I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me get that nice and close. See how I've got the black in the yellow and then I've gone into my yellow is now clean again. So they're self-cleaning, which makes it really nice when you're blending. All right. We've got our yellow down. So we can go ahead and start our orange. And again, I'm using um, 933 from the Bright Set. Let me just go ahead and color that in. And I really do like um, the dual brush pens for coloring. They um, are very bright and vibrant. The, um, the color is um, very true. They're very true to color. So they've got a nice variety of colors in the 108 set. And then the nice part about it is that they have the brush tip as well as having a bullet tip. So you've got the bullet tip on the end. And both of the pen tips are nylon. So they're very strong and they're very versatile. So if you're like really coloring hard um, that I can, you know, press really hard to get some good color out. And I still have that nice fine point for when I want to go and do my lettering. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and take my black because we've I've drawn a little face on my candy corn. So we're going to go ahead and, and add our face. Just draw two little circles for his eyes. And then I just draw a little jaunty smile. 
and you can see how he turned out pretty quick and easy. If you guys are finishing up and you want to turn your projects around and show me, I can see quite a few of you on video. Yay, very nice. That's good, Elisa. Very nice. Yay. Great job, guys. Love it. Nice job, June. Very good. Riley Grace, very nice. Cheryl, I can, I can, I can kind of see I'm, you're, you guys are kind of across the room from me. So yes, nice, great, excellent, very good. Okay, so now that we've got our candy corn down, I'm gonna flip the page and let's go ahead and do the witch's hat. So the witch's hat is gonna be like a cone and an oval with some details. Okay, so I'll put that right there. And we'll go ahead and start out with the witch's hat. It's just gonna be a triangle with no bottom. So go ahead and start, or it's gonna be a capital letter A, but don't put the, the crossbar in the, in the capital letter A. Okay. There we go. And then our next step is in the middle at the bottom of the capital letter A, we're gonna draw a square. And then we're gonna draw a smaller square inside. I'm gonna hold this up so you guys can see it a little better. Oops. So we've got our top of our witch's pointed hat. And then this is gonna be the buckle around the band of the hat. Okay. Then our next step is gonna be, we're gonna connect the band to the outside of the A. You guys see that? Okay, and then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So we're gonna come around and connect the top of the hat to the band and the buckle. So that's what you're gonna have something that looks like that. All right, then we're gonna draw kind of an oval. So I'm gonna start on one side this is gonna be the brim of the hat. And it can be a skinny oval or a fat oval. It doesn't matter which one. And then that is our witch hat. Four easy steps. The doodles are really simple once you break them down into, you know, simple everyday shapes. So, then we're gonna go ahead and color our witch hat. Um, I like to use, um, actually I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use 665, which is a fun bright purple. And I'm gonna use 173 from the bright set, which is a nice bright green. And then let's go ahead, good Halloween colors. We'll use the yellow, the 055 again, okay? So go ahead and, and then the nice thing too about the dual brush pens is we can get some shading on our witch's hat. Once we color it in, we can go back and apply additional layers of color over the first layer to get a nice dark shade on the, the back there. So let's go ahead and color in our witch hat. I'm using 665 from the bright set. And the bright set really is, if you're new to Tombow um, products, the bright set is a really nice set to start with because it is rainbow. So you do have, um, you know, all the colors of the rainbow, of course. And um, 
it is available at your local Michaels or you can order it too online from michaels.com. So that's nice. I don't know about you guys, but I have been doing a lot of, I buy it online and then I pick it up at the store. And I really like that a lot. All right, go ahead and get our witch's hat colored in. And the brush pen is really nice for coloring large sections because it's got the, the nice big brush tip and you can do a nice wide stroke of color. Okay, so I've got my base of my hat colored in and to give it a little bit of dimension, I'm just going to apply some extra strokes of color here on the side of the oval where it would be like the, this will be the back of the brim of the hat, just to give it a little bit of dimension. Now doodles are, you know, fun. So you can just go ahead and color it in flat. You don't have to add any dimension. I just wanted to show you guys how easy it was to add a little bit of dimension to your hat um, by using the same color, basically. You don't need um, any other colors. Just add a couple more layers of color on top. And same thing with our hat, if we wanted to add, I kind of like to use a little like flicking motion if you watch, I start out there and then kind of flick my pen upwards. And that kind of puts the color on, but also blends it nicely. And I'll give you guys a close up of this. So you can kind of see how I, sorry, I got to get it right on the camera. So you can kind of see how I've done a little bit of shading there on the the brim of the witch's hat. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead, color the band in with my um, 173 green. I love this purple and this green combination together for Halloween. It's super spooky. Okay, and again, I can add a little bit more green to the edges where there'd be a little bit more shadow, a little bit darker green inside the buckle on the ribbon, where there'd be a little bit more shading, give it a little bit more dimension. There we go. And then I'm gonna be traditional and do the buckle yellow. And again, it's a doodle, so you can color it in real loosely. It doesn't have to be a masterpiece. Um, the only thing that I ever say when I'm teaching people how to doodle, how to draw, is my only rule is that you have fun. So there is my finished witch hat. I'll give you like a close up. Ah. <laughs> I have to go the opposite direction. Okay, so do you guys have your witch's hats done? Can you turn them around so I can see them? Oh, look, you drew the whole witch. Very nice, Laura. Very good job. Oh, and we've got a nice hot pink. Is that Smitha's daughter with her hot pink witch's hat I see up there? Oh, very nice, guys. Good job. Love, love, love your hats. Very good job. Cheryl, very nice. And some of you are still concentrating, so that's good. I love to see the concentration. Joy, very nice. Riley, Sadie, very nice job, guys. Love it. Yay. Okay. So let's go ahead on to, you guys mastered that. That was kind of the one of the harder ones. So we're going to go ahead and do the pumpkin. So here we go. We've got our pumpkin, how to draw a pumpkin. Again, four easy steps. Okay, so I'll put that right there and we'll go ahead. I'm gonna draw a pretty big fat pumpkin. 
The nice thing about this is you can draw fat pumpkins, you can draw skinny pumpkins. It's the same process. So I'm gonna draw a tall skinny one and then I'm gonna draw a fat one. So we're gonna start out, so the first step on this one is we're just gonna draw like a skinny egg. And again, that's gonna be the center part of your pumpkin. So you can make it tall and skinny, you can make it short and fat, but it's gonna kind of be like an egg shape, okay? Like that. And then our next step is right here. We're gonna add the right side or the left side. We're gonna add the left side, sorry, right, left. So we're gonna kind of go up and we're gonna make our bottom bump larger than our top bump. So you can see that right there. I've kind of made a, an indent and then I've gone down and I've just made it wider at the bottom than it is at the top. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Good, good. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna do a little bump out and then I'm gonna make my pumpkin bigger at the bottom than it is at the top, right like that. Maybe that's more of a gourd than a pumpkin. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and add our stem. So I just like to add like a, it's like basically a rectangle a little bit wider at the top than it is at the bottom. You can see that. I need a close up cam. I need a cameraman here. <laughs> All right. And then you can go ahead and add, um, I'm going to add my tendrils with my 05 so that they don't bleed. So then just want to draw some loops and draw some like little pumpkin vines coming out of the top of your pumpkin like that. And that's our pumpkin. And then I'm going to go ahead and color him. What color do you think? 933 orange. <laughs> We can color in any color we want. Maybe I should, maybe I, I'm actually, you know what? Since it's October, I'm gonna draw my, I'm gonna color my pumpkin 743. I'm gonna color him hot pink for breast cancer awareness, right? Look at that. Look at that fun pink. So again, if you use the side of your dual brush pen brush tip, you get a nice wide stroke of color. And you get a nice squeak too sometimes. So you can go ahead, but the, what I really like about the um, mixed media paper for using uh, with drawing and doodling with the dual brush pens is you don't, um, you don't have any bleed through. So that's like the other side of my witch hat and you don't have any bleed through with the, uh, with the mixed media paper. And I really like the mixed media paper on the spiral. Um, because then you can open up your, your uh, journal book and you can lay it flat. <clears throat> so my voice is a little bit raspy today because we still have bad allergies down here in Florida. So sorry about that. All the things are blooming. All right. So there is the center of my pumpkin. All right, you guys are doing good. Keep going coloring. I love using unexpected colors because, well, a lot of times it just makes me happy to use fun, bright colors. It's kind of why, as you can tell, 
from when I introduced myself, I've, I use a lot of rainbows in my work. And I do a lot of, I do a lot of free printables um, on my blog and I do a lot of uh, kids crafts. So I have a lot of resources available for the kiddos. You can download, print, and they can set on to coloring, which is super fun. Keep them busy. I know some of you guys have already gotten snow. I haven't seen, let's see, it's been, I think two years since I've seen snow. We went to Colorado a couple of Christmases ago and that was fun. But yeah, I know you guys have already gotten some snow. I know you've got snow in, in Minneapolis. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so again, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna lay in some additional lines of color here, right at on this side of my line. You can see that. And that's gonna be where the natural folds of the pumpkin are, the creases. So that's gonna give our pumpkin a little bit more definition. And then at the bottom, I'm just gonna do that flicking of my pen motion again to get the shading at the bottom. So you can see I have a little pumpkin here on my table and see those are the, those are the little lines that we're drawing and coloring in. And then same thing on this other side, on the left side, I'm gonna go ahead and lay a little bit more color down right next to that line and then do some flicking at the bottom to get our shading. And then I have a secret trick to color in the pumpkin stem because our rainbow set does not have brown. But if you guys know the color wheel, we can make brown. So any of your complementary colors that are across the color wheel. So orange and blue will make brown, purple and yellow will make brown, and green and pink will make brown. And what you guys could do is over on the side if you want to try it out. I liked this bright pink the best and the green. If you just kind of flick that color in there. You can kind of see how that's turning brown. This blue is a little bit bright, so it didn't work as well. You'd need a blue that's a little bit lighter. See that one just kind of goes, it's the blue is a little bit too dark. And same with this purple. This purple is a little bit too dark to work with the yellow. See, we can see how the pink and the green really made the best brown. So put down a little bit of the pink first on your stem, 743. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna take the 173 green and I'm gonna go over top of that, a little bit more green than pink to get the right color. And you can kind of go over it a couple of times to get the right tone. But that's how I made the brown stem for my pumpkins. That actually turned out really good in brown. So you guys can see that. Can you see how brown that looks? And then I'm just gonna take my 173 again and I'm gonna trace over top of my tendrils, my vines, got a little bit of pink blended in there. That's kind of fun. I'm just going to trace over with my dual brush pens. <laughs> nice. Very good. Nice. 
I love the blue pumpkin, Wanda. Very cool. Nice. Good job, June. Riley Grace. Very nice, Joan. That's very nice, Joan. You guys did nice big pumpkins. Judy, excellent. Elisa, she put a face on her pumpkin. Very nice. Very good job, guys. I love it. Okay. So the other thing I want to talk to you guys about today is, so we can go over our, let's see again what we've done. So we made our candy corn. We learned how to do that. We learned how to do our witch hat. And then we learned how to do our pumpkin. Fun, fun. Um, one of the things that I always like to do when I get a new set of markers or colored pencils or crayons or any kind of anything is I like to always do um, a color chart. So I did this color chart um, for my bright palette 10 pack. And then I went ahead and wrote in each one of the numbers so that I had that for reference. And then what I do is I will open up the package and I will keep it in the package with the markers. So then when I take them out to do another um, project, again, I'll already have a color reference on you know, what my different colors look like in my pack. And that's good with acrylics. It's good with um, colored pencils. It's good with anything that you might have um, that you need to do a color swatch with. So yeah, I really like to do color swatching. So it's nice to um, create co color combinations too and see what um, works well with each other. Hey Beth, so, um, yes. do you do the bookmarks on the same paper you just used to draw the doodles with? Yes, I sure did. Great, that yes. was just the question. So I wanted yeah. to get that answer. I sure did. I did, um, let's see, this rectangle is two and a half inches by six and a half inches. So I just drew a rectangle. Um, I put my, my doodle guys in there first. And then this one, I just drew a spider web. Do you guys want me to show you how to draw a spider web real quick? It's really easy. Okay, here we go, spider web. So you're just gonna draw an X and then you're gonna draw a plus sign through your X. Okay, kind of like a snowflake. And then you're just gonna draw some scallops in between each of your bars there. This is really shaky and messy, but that's okay. And just kind of go around and keep making your spider web bigger and bigger and bigger. Spider webs are easy and fun things to um, incorporate into doodles too, because they are easy and quick. So then for the spider, I just kind of picked a spot and drew a line down. And then I just drew, you know, drew a circle, filled him in, and then gave him eight legs. Boop, boop, eight legs. And I gave him little feet too, just because he's a doodle. So that's the nice thing too about doodles. You don't have to be anatomically correct. I am gonna give him eight legs though. I see a lot of spiders with six legs and that's just not right. <laughs> and then if you want, you can give him some big googly eyes at the bottom. So there's a quick, quick and easy spider web. There's our little spider. There we go. Nice. Nice job, June. Good job. So, yep, so that's what I did with this one. And then same with the little candy corn. I put the witch's hat on top of the candy corn and just added some stars and added a little checkerboard border. 
and then just hand lettered the trick or treat. And this one says, crawl into a good book. And again, these are gonna be, these are on my blog right now as a download. Um, same with the trick or treat coloring page. I've got that on my blog as a download, but again, I just block letters. I added my little pumpkins. I shaded them in at the bottom, added their little vines. And then I just did a checkerboard on the edge with little um, triangles and little circles just to create a fun border. Quick and easy, quick, quick and easy. And then this, this was one of my favorites. I really thought this was fun easy way to do a little trick or treat or you've been booed. A ghost doodle would be really easy to do too. So fun little treats that you can drop off. And then same with my, my journal page. I started doing the mood trackers um, when uh, things started shutting down so that I could keep track. <laughs> And now it just gives me inspiration. I pick the happiest, brightest color for my happy mood. So I like to make sure I have plenty of happiness in there. And then with the candy corns, I just spelled October right in the candy corns. Just drew the candy corns across the top of the page and drew my letters inside the candy corn for the title. But you could do that if you're, you know, sending a card to someone or, you know, wanting to wish someone a happy Halloween, you could do that as well. So do we have any questions? Um, let's see if we have a few that come in. Drop them in the comments. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. No, nope. Riley Grace doesn't have any questions. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have any tips for doing a ghost doodle by any chance? Oh, yeah, sure. We could do a little ghost doodle. Let's go ahead and flip the page. Give us a clean page. So a ghost, I'll make him as big as I can here. I would just start out with a, with like an upside down U. Here, I'm, I'm out of my screen there a little bit. So start out with kind of a fancy upside down U. And then I'm going to make my ghost have some fun. Put a little bottom on him like that. And then you can make the, the face. Um, you could just make the face three ovals if you wanted to, or three capital letter O's if he's a scared ghost. And then just go ahead and color those in. Or you could make, you know, you could give it, make him a fancy ghost and make him a purple ghost or a pink ghost or a blue ghost. But yeah, that would be a simple, simple, simple ghost. And then if you want to make a make a girl ghost, just give some eyelashes on the side. Like that. There we go. There's our girl ghost. Ghosts are really easy because they're kind of just blobs, right? So there's a ghost. Let's see, what else can we think of? <laughs> Thanks, Beth. Um, Doodles, yes. Someone asked if you could show your bookmarks one more time. Maybe they oh, just yeah. didn't have a chance to see them. Absolutely. Here, let's get a clean page here. Maybe I'll just lay them flat for a minute so everybody can see. If that makes it easier. Yeah. Is that good? But again, they are definitely, they're on my blog. You can download them and print them. And then I have two blanks on that same page so that I've given you two that are drawn and then you can create two of your own. And then I can pick these up maybe and 
let's see if I can show. There, got to get it in the right position. So there's some stars. And then we have our little candy corn witch. And then I just wrote trick or treat. And I put a couple more stars down there. And that just has a checkerboard border. Checkerboard is really super easy and it makes everything look fun. And then the crawl into a good book, I did the spider web with the little spider and then crawl into a good book. And then I put the pumpkin down at the bottom. That's, that's awesome, Beth. Um, since mm -hmm. we have a little bit more time, maybe you can yep. do one more doodle. Um, you can pick um, the requests we've gotten so far are either a skeleton, a mummy, okay. or a black cat. So I'm not sure which one of those you want to tackle, but we can okay. have um, one or two more depending on how long it takes. <laughs> well, let's see. I could definitely show you pretty easily how to do like a skeleton skull. Um, that would be pretty easy. So what I would do for a skull, skeleton skull is I would start out by kind of drawing a circle, but don't, but leave the bottom open. Okay. And then we're just going to stick a square on the bottom of the, of the circle, just like that. And then let's give him, give him some sunken in eyes. And then the nose is kind of like that. And then we've got, this is I think the fun way to do it. So then, so then I just did, did some, again, capital, capital letter O or ovals. And then I just gave it a little bit of shading. We'll color that in. And then I gave him a triangle nose. And then for the mouth, I drew another rectangle. And what I'm gonna do for that is I'm gonna give him some teeth. So we'll just draw a straight line through the center and then just give him some rectangles to make it look like teeth. How does that look? <laughs> and then we'll just color in, we'll color in his eyeballs or his eye sockets, I guess, right? He's a skeleton, so he actually doesn't have any eyeballs. He just has eye sockets. All right. See, now he would look really cool pink. I'm just saying. Um, a mummy would be, let's see, I could do like a mummy head. We're going to start out, I'm just trying to think of how to start out with that. Hmm. Let's start out with a circle or like a, an oval. Okay, so we'll start out with an oval for our mummy, right? You guys see that? And then mommy's gonna be pretty easy. So we'll just draw some strips across and maybe a couple of this way so that we can see his bandages. And then what you wanna do is we'll draw a strip this way and then we'll fill in his eyeballs, but we'll make his eyeballs be kind of behind the strips. How about that? Maybe one in and one out. How about that? Good. Little strip there. Another couple of strips this way. I don't think you usually see the mummy's mouth, do you? So I think we can just do, just do lines. Just fill your circle in with lines and then we'll give them a nice big scary eyeballs. Make them look angry maybe. Let's see. Mummies are usually angry, aren't they? There we 
we go. Mommy, <laughs> good first attempt. Yeah, I think that's really cute. Right <laughs> off the cuff there. What was the other one? Skeleton mummy and uh, oh, a, black, a black cat. Yeah, a lot of people. Like a silhouette. Talking. Let's see. A I cat can do that. <laughs> a cat. Oh, bat's easy. Bat's super easy. We'll do bat first. Okay. Um, a bat, you could just do, um, I like to do circle. You could also do an oval. So you have your circle and then you're gonna draw two triangles on the top. Let me actually, you know what? Let me flip the page and I'll draw it bigger. So, cause a cat and a bat would kind of be a little bit the same. So let me draw a big circle. We'll do the cat first real quick. So we've got a triangle or a capital letter A, capital letter A. Then you can do a little one inside. And then you're gonna have two eyes. And I always like to make my nose really big on my little kitty cats. So the nose is kind of like an upside down triangle that has curved lines like that. And then we'll give a backwards letter J and another letter J for the, uh, for the mouth. And then we'll give him three lines for whiskers. And we'll fill in his little eyeballs like that. So <laughs> these are off the cuff. <laughs> and then a bat would be very similar. So for the bat, let's draw our circle in the center. And then we're gonna give him two ears We'll give him eyes. And if it's a vampire bat, he's gonna need a smile with a couple of fang teeth. And then for the wings, I would just draw like a large arch, like almost like you're gonna be drawing a rainbow. Okay, for his wing. So kind of draw like an arch for a rainbow. And then at the bottom, just connect it with some scallops or some like some pointed scallops like that. And then do the same thing on the other side, a rainbow and some scallops, some pointed scallops. He looks a little tired, <laughs> but. I think that looks really cute, bad. So there's our bat and there's our little black cat. I guess I have some work to do for how to draw different things and get those on my blog, huh? I like the skeleton. He's pretty cute. Do we have any others? I think that's about it. Um, that's about I'm, it? Okay. Yeah, I'm just too nervous to get into any more and then run out of time. So um, it looks like those are pretty much the most popular requests <laughs> we got in for the class. Um, I just Good. want to let um, I just want to let everyone know that a replay of this class will be available in the next couple of days on the Michaels website, and we'll be sharing it on Tombo's um, Instagram stories as well. And um, Beth, do you want to let everyone know one more time where to find you on social media if they have any additional um, questions before we uh, finish this class? Yes, absolutely. Um, I am creatively Beth. C-R-E-A-T-I-V-E-L-Y-B-E-T-H. Um, that is my blog, creativelybeth.com. I'm on Instagram at creativelybeth and same with Facebook. Um, I'm creativelybeth on Facebook as well. And I have a uh, printable library um, on my blog that uh, has a lot of different resources. And again, the um, different projects that I showed here today, as well as the actual how to doodle sheets, I have those available on, um, on my blog with instructions and printable downloads. Very nice black cat, Riley Grace. Good job, you guys. Very nice. You guys did great. Awesome. Well, thank you so yeah. much, Beth. And thank Absolutely. you everyone for attending the class. And um, we hope to see yes. you in future classes. <laughs> yes. Thanks a bunch. Bye, everyone.